The Pittsburgh Steelers were tasked with the tough task of replacing Big Ben Roethlisberger, who had been their starting quarterback since 2004. But that was back in 2016, and they waited until now. <laughs> uh, but no, they... Uh, they drafted Kenny Pickett at number 20. I feel like a lot of people thought that maybe it was going to be Malik Willis. Maybe they would take Desmond Ritter. Maybe they would take Matt Corral. They were linked to a bunch of different guys. Maybe they were going to keep Kenny Pickett local. Went to school at Pitt. Ends up staying in the Berg. Pittsburgh Steelers took him. Only quarterback to go in the first round. And no quarterback went in the second round either. So the Steelers obviously felt pretty strongly that he was their guy. And it would help them compete right now. And I think... If you're talking about the best quarterback day one, it is going to be Kenny Pickett. Yeah, maybe you got like Malik Willis or Desmond Ritter, Matt Corral, you know, Sam Howell. Maybe those guys have more potential long term. Maybe, maybe not, right? But Kenny Pickett right now will help the Steelers compete and step right in. And for the Steelers that under Mike Tomlin, one of the best coaches in NFL history, I'm comfortable making that claim. And that doesn't necessarily mean top five or top 10, right? But he's on the outside looking in probably top 20 or 25. The record speaks for itself. He's a Super Bowl champion and he has never had a season winning fewer than eight games. So plugging Kenny Pickett right in for a team that already just runs the ball only anyway. <laughs> I think he's going to be fine. No, they do they do throw a lot, but it's a quick game mostly. And, and Kenny Pickett should be able to handle that. But yeah, enough talk. Let's go ahead and get into it. Rebuild the Pittsburgh Steelers. So I really like the Steelers draft class. And we're going to have a little bit of fun. You know, I, I have the overalls tuned a certain way. And not all of these are going to reflect what the actual rookies will have bad in 23. Because I just don't care. I'm not going to be doing that. I'm not dealing with it, okay? But what I am doing, as James Daniels is starting at multiple offensive line positions, I think he's better suited at center, honestly, watching him play at Iowa, but he's played guard in the league mostly. But the team signed Mason Cole, so I guess that's their plan there. Can't be all that worse than uh, Ken, uh, Kendrick Green, who was there last season. But uh, he was also a rookie that played guard at Illinois. It's like they're asking him to just go play center. It's not that easy. Anyway, George Pickens, I think, could end up being the best receiver in the class. I've given him a 75 overall. Is that a bit high? Yeah, you know what? It probably is. But he has true X potential, which means a true receiver one outside potential that can be the guy. And the thing with him is he has maturity issues and some character concerns. So a team wasn't really comfortable taking him that high in the draft because, yeah, there are some concerns that he'll flame out or be a locker room problem, etc. These are just things that have been said, by the way. I don't know George Pickens other than what I've seen on the field, and I like the player a lot. Although you could also say some stuff on the field. He loves a good unnecessary roughness. He's a big fan of that. But I've given him star dev. I think he's great. Kenny Pickett is only a 71. You go, okay, first round pick. How is he so low? I think his ratings are quite fair. 88 throw power. I think that's quite fair. Accuracies are pretty good overall. He's fairly athletic. Like, I don't really know what more you'd want to see from a rookie quarterback. I think 71 is very, very fair. Given Calvin Austin, 72 star dev. He's only 5'8", 170. His head looks like it weighs about 100 pounds of that. Jesus, that thing's massive. But he's a beast. He was awesome at the Senior Bowl, and the reason he falls in the draft is because he's so small. 5'8", 170, it's just a really light NFL player. Like he, it just is. So there are some concerns there. Uh, and then defensively, the only guy in here is DeMarvin Leal, who could end up being a pretty good starter. Inside out flexibility, I think he fits the Steelers really, really well. I would say, not that it's a one-for-one -one comparison with Stefan to it, but that's the same type of role that DeMarvin Leal will play. And I think he's going to excel in that role. So I'm excited to see what he can do and how he can develop. I was disappointed with him in 2021 when I was watching him. Because he was someone that I watched in 2020. And I go, if this guy puts it all together, he could end up being a beast. Didn't really put it all together in 2021, unfortunately. And I, I was a little bit lower on his um, draft prospect status as a result. But I do think the player could end up being quite good. I think he's athletic. I think he has a history of playing multiple different positions. And I think if they figure out exactly what they want him to do, say, hey, focus on this one thing, he could end up being great. So I think DeMarvin Leal could end up being a really, really solid player. But you've seen the team 
I'll go over it very, very quickly, but the focuses are on Deontay Johnson, Chase Claypool on offense, Najee Harris, of course, stud running back. And Najee Harris, although I did not like the pick, just because I don't love taking a running back round one with other more pressing needs. And it's not like, okay, best player available, let's grab a running back. It's like, I just didn't love that. But I did love Najee Harris as a player. He was my running back one in the class. Javante Williams was close. Michael Carter was right in that conversation. Uh, Travis Etienne, I liked. And I think they all kind of do different things. But Najee is uh, amazing. I really love the player because he's someone that not only is a powerful bruising back that loves to fight for extra yards, he's also someone that can catch the ball really well out of the backfield for a big, big running back. And that's just kind of a rarity. So I like the player a lot. Offensive line, it's not awful. Dan Moore, Kevin Dotson, Mason Cole was signed in free agency. Uh, James Daniels was signed in free agency. Love that one. Core four is going to start at right tackle. Pat Fryermuth, or, or Fryer Muth, going to play uh, right tackle. Or, nope, tight end. Jesus. And then uh, brought in Miles Jack in free agency because the Jags just cut him. You have Alex Highsmith, Devin Bush, TJ Watt, obviously. Terrell Edmonds is someone we're probably looking to upgrade. Minka Fitzpatrick had a bit of a down year last year, but is still quite good. And then you brought in Akella Witherspoon. He played fairly well last year for the Steelers. Brought in Levi Wallace this free agency. And of course have Cam Sutton and Isaiah Johnson. Yeah, wow. Justin Lane as well was a player I liked coming out of Michigan State. And then you have Tyson Alawalu, Stefan Tuitt, and of course the ageless Cam Hayward. His brother was drafted by the Steelers too. Kind of an H-back, like fullback tight end. Connor Hayward out of Michigan State. But uh, he is not in this because he's not going to play an impact. But that's the team. Went over it as quickly as possible. And let's sim to the midseason mark, see how we're doing. Wow, one in five. That's pretty bad. Defense is horrible. All right. Well, with an 87 overall defense, that is incredibly concerning. I'm going to load in the 2023 draft class I've been using as well. I think it's pretty good. Don't love everything about it. But overall, I think it's fairly good and represents at least how everyone seems to view the class right now. I would say these are probably the top four guys in the class in no particular order. And I think the quarterbacks probably are in the right order right now. But overall, it looks pretty good. Well, this wasn't a great year. 5-12. and 12. Every other team in the AFC North went 10-7, and seven, by the way. This would be the worst record by a few wins. And there's an extra game, keep in mind, that Mike Tomlin has ever had. This is atrocious. But when you look at the offense, look at the defense, we had the worst defense in the league. That's not expected in real life. So we're going to have to change these playbooks. But yeah, pretty horrific year. Just all around. Can't even say a positive thing about it. Yeah, Kenny Pickett uh, did his best Big Ben impression. This is not great. All right, am I just going to keep disrespecting Ben the entire rebuild? Maybe I will. That'd be fun. Because Steelers fans, like, oh, dude, if anybody can't take a joke, whew. <laughs> and that's going to rile some people up too, which I'm, I'm happy about. Uh, Najee Harris had a good year. No complaints here. It's a great season. He got the ball every play and made the most of his touches. Kenny Pickett, man, we got to be better than that. Receiving Deontay Johnson was great. George Pickens had a pretty solid rookie campaign. Chase Claypool, whatever. Friar Muth, kind of the same deal. And then defensively, Miles Jack had a ton of tackles. So did Devin Bush. 19 tackles for loss for Cam Hayward. 14 for Tuitt. 12 for Highsmith. And the quarterback sacks, everybody contributed, but no one went over seven and a half. And TJ Watt, man, had three? What could his role possibly have been that he had three sacks and 32 solo tackles? I am confused. Like, does something seem off here? Seven is rookie year, 13, 14, 15, should be 16. <laughs> Or like the 22 that he had in real life. It's three. Miles Jack also had four picks, which led the team. But you never really see interceptions in simulation, as you guys know. Hopefully that's better for Madden 23. But I got a seeking suspicion that it won't be. But that sneaking suspicion is just that. I'm not really sure. Hopefully it is. But we don't really know. John Johnson won Super Bowl MVP. I've ranted about John Johnson's name about 100 times on this channel. That joke feels fairly dead. I'm sure I'll revive it for Madden 23 when I run out of material, which I guess is kind of now. Trevor Lawrence wins Offensive Rookie of the Year. Aiden Hutchinson wins Defensive Rookie of the Year. 
And Zeke won MVP. Browns won the Super Bowl. What a bizarre year. Nobody that we have to re-sign. The top guy is Mitchell Trubisky. And, like, come on. I'm not even going to address that. We'll go to free agency. Have just over 50 mil to spend. And it's not a great group. Don't want Akeem Hicks. Don't really want Odell. Don't want Gronk. We got Presley Harvin. We're good at punter. Got Chris Boswell. We're fine at kicker. So, shockingly... We have the number two overall pick of the draft. I wish we didn't because I really do not think the Steelers will be in this position. Maybe they will be. I mean, anything can happen, right? But I very much doubt it. I think they're too well of a coach team. I like it. I just don't think it will be the case. Miles Jacob, the superstar X Factor, by the way. So is Cam Hayward if he wasn't. Kella Weatherspoon has star now. So uh, the temptation here is just to take... Jalen Carter or Will Anderson Jr. Really, Trenton Simpson would be cool. I want one of the corners. I probably want Keely Ringo. So what do I do? I trade down. If the Panthers, Giants, Bucks, Falcons, if any of those guys want to trade their first round pick, I'd be more than willing to answer calls. I mean, even Minnesota at eight, although I would be a little bit worried about him being gone at that point. The Giants potentially, Atlanta. It might be Atlanta. I think Atlanta is offering the best deal. So we're going to move down to number seven. And one of the two corners will be available, either Keely Ringo or Eli Ricks. I don't actually have a preference at this point. We're going to get one of them. I think Ringo might end up being better. It's kind of my expectation, but we'll have to see. However, they should be available. One of the two at least, right? Unless we see like... Eli Rick shockingly go at four or five and then uh, that kind of offsets everything but we should be able to upgrade corner as much as I think Will Anderson Jr. is a beast and the Giants got him I'm gonna I'm stiffening up <laughs> uh I think the corner is the biggest need on this team we need a true CB1 and like the pass rushers are good even if I move to a 4-3 I think we're still fine High Smith, I guess, can be a weird outside linebacker where he's kind of like a hybrid player. Like, whatever. Then we have Devin Bush, Miles Jack, we're fine. Watt moves down. Tuit moves inside. Alawalu sticks. Hayward stays on the outside. Ooh, so we have our pick of the corners at seven. This trade down worked out perfectly because we picked up a second round pick and we still get the guy we want. So I am going to go Keely Ringo here just because I talked it up. And we can reunite him with George Pickens. D zone coverage is actually shockingly bad. I don't like to see that. D zone coverage. What does Ricks have? We don't even know. Don't have a clue. Maybe it's good. Maybe it's bad. I mean, he's got elite everything. Ran the fastest time. I'm going to take him anyway. Keely Ringo does have star dev. 95 speed. And keep in mind, at 6'2", 205, he's got some ideal size for the position. We'll simulate to round two. Definitely not afraid to move down. I remember this draft class not being great. Remember the second round pick we got is next year, by the way. Getting Emil Ekeyor could be good. BJ Ojolari would be tempting. Always tempted by BJ. Uh, sometimes it's tough to say no. And we could use another edge rusher. I might just take Ekeyor and move James Daniels to center. Ekeyor stays a guard. Let's do that. Immediate need. Hidden Dev, which is nice. 90 strength as well. We'll have to see if he's any good. Should be okay. Jermaine Burton could end up being a first-round receiver. It's a true thing. Transferred from Georgia to Bama. Just in Madden, I don't really view receiver as a position of need. I'm going to take Jalen Catalan. Just kind of feels like a stealer. I think I drafted him in the last rebuild I did, which was the Jaguars. But Catalan just is too good of a fit. And he can play over Terrell Edmonds next season, probably. Not like this upcoming season, but developing a bit in the next season. So I'm going to do that. The Steelers should have four, five, six in real life next year, but I'd have to go out and trade for all their actual mid-round picks, which I don't really care about anyway, so ignore that. And Keely Ringo's pretty good. 78 overall. 66 zone coverage is horrific. Why is this so bad? Mil Ekior 73, Jalen Catalan 71. Okay. Good time to remind you guys to hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed already, by the way. And I've also recently partnered up with Underdog Fantasy, which I'm pretty excited about. I could never deal with the long-term 
like managing my team every week. But with underdog, you just draft your team and then that's it, which I really, really like. So I definitely want to be doing some drafts with you guys on Twitter. Uh, we'll be doing some YouTube videos as well, probably, because I know a lot of you guys love fantasy. But when you can sign up at underdog, use code Bengal when you do. They will match your first deposit up to $100. So if you put in $100, they will give you $100 for free. And let's play some fantasy together. That's code Bengal on Underdog Fantasy. Oh yeah, the Steelers have Carl Joseph. Another player that just feels like a Steeler. <laughs> I remember watching his highlight tape back when he was a freshman at West Virginia. It was sick. Okay, so Keely Ringo is definitely starting. That's my new CB1. Akello Witherspoon is cool. Levi Wallace could be a third. Like now the cornerback group looks better. I don't know that it looks amazing, but it looks better. Watt, Hayward. All right, we're looking good up there. Ringo can play in the nickel. That's fine. George Pickens in the slot. Okay, we're going Browns offense. I have kept the Steelers scheme defensively, but I've changed it to Jaguars 3-4, which I've seen be quite successful. So we'll see on that. And hopefully 2022, which is really 2023, Goes significantly better. Okay, so a little bit better. Three and four at the midseason mark. Now, our offense, despite being same playbook as this team, we're playing the six and one, the Browns. Uh, our offense is 29th, theirs is third. And you could argue, hey, the Browns are better. They're an 87 overall on offense. You're an 81. That's a fair point. Usually it doesn't matter. But here, I guess it, it does. Is that just Kenny Pickett not being great yet? and I def desperately need some tackles. Could be fair criticisms. I, I, I hear you on that. And I'll work on the tackles thing. We'll see about that. And then defensively, we're a bit better. I'm interested to see how it's gonna be at the end of the season. I think we can get a better idea of whether it's gonna be an actual good defense or if I just have to move to a four or three, go with what I know is effective and, and successful in simulation. So it just might have to happen. Players ready to negotiate, we have eight of them. And they are important. Minka, Stefan Suet, Deontay Johnson. Yeah, definitely some players for sure. Like in real life, am I re-signing Devin Bush? Probably not. In video game land, I'm not even going to hesitate. That's an absolute yes. Okay, so we got Devin Bush, Deontay Johnson, Stefan Suet, and Minka. Chris Boswell, I just, I'm not paying him that. Like, I'm just not. I would give him this. He wants more money. And I don't care. That's two things about us. He wants more money, and I couldn't care less about that. We made the playoffs. Third best record in the AFC North got in at 9-8. and eight. Where are we? So the offense is still bad. The defense is closer to average. So there's that. Well, in terms of points per game, yards per game, we were actually way better than that. But the offense is just not there yet. Oh, Kenny Pickett. This is a super just boring year. I'm getting out of Cleveland playbook. It's just... It's not developing him. This is this is just a, such a horrible season. Yeah, Najee Harris was awesome, but I'd rather be more pass-focused so we can actually put up some points. And, I mean, look at these numbers, dude. This just ain't it. That's not good at all. Miles Jack, once again, puts up a ton of tackles. Cameron Hayward and TJ Watt, both very good defensive numbers. 18 sacks apiece tied for the team lead. That's way better. Way better in this defense. So I think we might stick in this. I think that's fine. Miles Jack, four picks, as did Keely Ringo as a rookie. Okay. Superstar Dev. Zone coverage is, oh, just terrible, dude. And the, the CPU will not upgrade that. They won't. Okay. I mean, here's the problem with our record so far, right? It's like our team hasn't been nearly as good as some of the teams that we're losing to, probably, as we beat the Colts 24-20. They were a good team, too. Did not really expect that. But as you see with the Browns here, it's like, they're better than we are. They're an 88 overall. We're just not there yet. If Terrell Edmonds goes up to star, I don't even know what to tell you at this point. But you see my point. It's like, we're not ready yet. We are overperforming expectations. We're doing way better than we should. So as long as we can keep this up next year, year after that, we should see a lot of success. Maybe I stick in this playbook just because now we're winning in the playoffs. I don't know what to do, okay? I'm just tempted to throw on Chiefs playbook and just see Kenny Pickett throw for 5,000 yards. We lose to the Browns by one. 
I don't think Terrell Edmonds is gonna get up to star dev. No, he's not. Chiefs beat the Bucks in the Super Bowl. This is why I run with the Chiefs playbook. Will Anderson Jr. wins Defensive Rookie of the Year. Like the look of that. Uh, Patrick Mahomes wins MVP. And of course, the Chiefs beat the Bucks in the Super Bowl. You just gotta run Chiefs stuff. They're just too good. Gonna let a lot of these guys go. We did re-sign Chukwuma Akora for, but I'm gonna let go of Benny Snell. Chris Boswell, I'm just not paying that money to. It's not gonna do it. So I'll re-sign him in free agency for cheaper. So we need a tackle in free agency, probably. Like, Dan Moore and Chukwuma Akora for are cool because they're young, but they're not elite. So I, I could upgrade over either of those guys. I know I just re-signed Shukuma Akora for, but it might be him because he's a little bit older. Other than that, I like the offense. And then defensively, I could use a true nose tackle. But what I also could do is just slide Stefan Tuit over to D-tackle. And then our rush D-tackles could be Cam Hayward, Stefan Tuit, And we could pick up an edge rusher. I know Max Crosby's in free agency. I saw him. That could be quite good. Still maybe a safety. No tackle worth signing, so it's kind of a tough spot. But Max Crosby definitely is worth signing without any top-tier defensive tackles in here. That's the target to go after for sure. There is not a tougher player to sign in free agency than Denzel Ward. I give this guy the world, and he denies me. You know what's funny about this? Is in my Jags rebuild, I overpaid him, and he declined my offer to go to the Steelers... Now that I'm the Steelers, it still isn't good enough. It's like he knows, dude. Look at this D-line. TJ Watt, Cam Hayward, Stefan Suet, Max Crosby. That's going to be a problem. Just realized it's been simulating to the draft for about 20 minutes. <laughs> Maybe I should try restarting. Yeah, there it is. That's what I've been doing the last few offline. I'm so sick of this. Lions pick at number one overall and number two overall. Very good for them. We're going to simulate to the 25th pick and see what we can do. Should have at least checked and, and seen uh, who was available if I wanted to trade up. But let's be honest, would I have even known about any of these prospects? Unlikely. Lewis Wilson seems okay. He's like Alex Highsmith if I don't want to pay Alex Highsmith. Let's draft him. Ooh, normal dev. My favorite. Love that. Ooh, Matthew Whitworth is very good. Classic center just being great in the Madden 22 draft engine. And I'm taking him. Uh, he's 6'1", so probably not going to move him to tackle. But could I? Yeah, I probably could. See, I would never take a tackle. F run block. No. Linebacker with A zone coverage, Zach Tillman. Out of Texas, hook him horns. I'm sold. Hidden dev, 88 speed. This is, a, and dude, any linebacker named Zach, like, they're ready to go. Zach Thomas, that's the end of the list. Don't tell me Zach Bond. He spells it with a K. I was thinking about Tim Cameron with my last pick. I think he could be bad, see pass block, but he's strong. And it, maybe that equates to decent player. Yeah, I don't know about that, but that's the last pick. I'll have the CPU do the rest. I think it's been a pretty good draft. I do. Ooh, Tim Cameron's not good. Neither is really Teron Mayo. But Pierre Randall in the fifth. It's going to be up to a 70 overall. Not horrible. Good scheme fit too. Like that. But the real picks are these top three. So we have Lewis Wilson, who is a backup. Like He's actually really well-rounded. Like a really well-rounded rush linebacker. So that's cool, but I, you know, I, I don't think he's going to start. So that is what it is. Matthew Whitworth is also good. No gloves, no anything. Just straight up, I'm in the jersey. Let's go play football. That's a Hall of Fame offensive lineman. And then Zach Tillman, 71 across the board. Seems like a pretty well-rounded player. He's not going to play, but he, it's a fine pick. So I'm disrespecting the game of football by moving Kevin Dotson to left tackle. Whitworth is going to start at center. Just wanted the dev trait. Pretty much all that is. And then I'm fine with our depth uh, other than that. Specialists are in a good spot too. I think we're good. 
I did not change the offense to Chiefs. I probably should have. We're three and four. Every other team in the North has five wins. You know what, though? I'm going to leave it. I'm going to see how we are at the end of the year. I think we're going to be a playoff team. And we did okay in the playoffs last season. I don't really feel pressure to change it. It's not like our record says that we can't be a playoff team. Yeah, we're not positive, but it's pretty close to 500. Still early in the season, keep in mind. We have, you know, nine games left. So, or 10 games left now with the 17 game schedule. We'll go to the playoffs. Actually, do I need anyone to re sign a contract first? That's going to be big. Miles Jack, James Daniels, Chase Claypool. Okay, I do need to re sign some guys. And now I have to pay Kevin Dotson to tackle because I, again, am disrespecting this great game. I'll simulate probably to week 11 and we'll call it there. Or we're in week 12 and we're four and seven. Not great. Offense is 25th. Unacceptable. I'm changing it now. We could still make the playoffs. Uh, Kevin Dotson's still cheap. It don't matter. But we got him back. We got everybody back on this left side except for Terrell Edmonds and Levi Wallace. Terrell Edmonds, I still might. I'm just not thrilled with him as a player. Yeah, he's fine. All right. He's not expensive either. We can still upgrade, but he's fine for now. And uh, at worst, he's a good backup. Levi Wallace, I'd need to do better than. But we're in week 12. We just need to turn this season around. I'm in Chiefs playbook now. And I think our offense is probably going to take a radical 180. Start being really good. Never mind. 29th best offense. I don't know what to do anymore, guys. <laughs> it just is what it is. Kenny Pickett threw 21 touchdowns, 15 picks. We need a full season of it. That's what it is. We need a full season of it. Najee was still sweet. I mean, George Pickens and Chase Claypool can be great. And Deontay Johnson, we've seen it already. But we just need an offense that plays to the new strengths of this team, which is throwing the damn ball. Three players at over 100 tackles, 15 tackles for loss for TJ Watt, who led the team with 14 and a half sacks. The defensive line wasn't quite as good as I wanted them to be. I am this close to moving to a 4-3 and just trying to be as competitive as possible. But no, you know what? The defense was still quite good. So that's not the problem. It's the offense. Niners beat the Browns in the Super Bowl. The Browns just, they just do it. They just get to the Super Bowl every year. If they're not the Chiefs or Bucks. Cowboys, Zeke wins MVP. Brian Burns, Defensive Player of the Year. Love to see that. Aaron Mabin? There's an outside linebacker in an auto-generated class named Aaron Mabin. Do you guys remember him? Uh, maybe you won't, but he was a linebacker at Penn State. He was drafted at number 11 overall in 2009, and he did not win Defensive Rookie of the Year. Aaron Mabin was, in fact, so bad that the Bills who drafted him at 11, he lasted on that team for only two seasons and then ended up on the Jets who he lasted with for two seasons and then was out of the league at 24 years old. Wild stuff. But now a different Aaron Maben wins Defensive Rookie of the Year. Craziness. I'm going to pass on everybody in here. They're either like regressing or not good enough. Actually, I think they're all regressing probably. But we'll go into free agency. We have money. We just got to start performing. It's pretty frustrating that we're not, to be honest, especially now that we're near 90 overall. That's the best team in the league. Like, we got to start winning games. Tyron Smith is here. Don't really need Logan Wilson. But I'm going to sign Sebastian Joseph Day, I think, for depth on the D-line. And I'm going to try and sign Tyron Smith because he's an elite left tackle. An elite left tackle. I actually definitely cannot afford Sebastian Joseph Day. So we're going to look at another defensive tackle. Fletcher Cox, pretty good backup to have. Let's do that. Cannot afford him. All right, BJ Hill it is. All right, we got BJ Hill and Tyron Smith. Probably looking to draft the defensive tackle in the draft anyway, though. Tackle's now totally solved. Kevin Dotson's going to stick, but Tyron Smith is going to definitely start at tackle for us. Left tackle, I think Kevin Dotson's going to play right. Might also want to draft a corner. Corner actually might be a bigger need than I thought. We're picking a number four in the draft. It's annoying is what it is. Is there a good corner? No, usually they would be like higher than this. He's got D man coverage, dude. 
Not gonna work. Okay, this Braden Bonham character looks pretty good. I'll tell you though, it does suck to look at the first corner and be like, okay, that's just gonna be the best corner in the class and he's not good. Just kind of sucks. Although the other corner I looked at didn't really look too bad. I think I am going to go with the defensive tackle just for a good bit of depth at the position. Braden Bonham. Now, I could trade for a corner. The problem is we don't really have a lot of money. So we would be fairly limited in terms of what corner we can actually acquire just because we don't really have a ton of money. I'll... I'll look though. Okay, I'm trading number four overall and Chukwuma Okora four for Patrick Sertan, the second PS2 coming to Pittsburgh. I almost went after AJ Terrell again, but I'm like, I did that very recently. So getting Patrick Sertan, is it the most realistic trade? Yeah, maybe, maybe not, but we're doing it. I like how we have the full 100% on all of these tight ends and they're all day through. Oh, except for this one, round one to two. A gem tight end? Who is this? Kelvin Arrington? Just A's all over the place? Alright, shit. Kevin Arrington. Deep into the draft. Welcome to Pittsburgh. I didn't even know those existed. We drafted him a few rounds too early, but also before we probably uh, before we should have, but his true talent says that's the right spot. The CPU actually drafted a 71 overall corner. I mean, he can't cover, but not a bad pick deep into the draft, but Kelvin Arrington is a 72, and he looked way better as a prospect. He's not actually that good, but I think it's a pretty good pick for the spot, or especially where he was projected to go. Tillman has star dev, like that. Specialist, things are in a pretty good spot. We just have to be better than we were last year. It was just... Way too disappointing last season, but now that we have Patrick Sertan, we have Keely Ringo, of course, has been here. The team looks very, very good to me. It's just a question of whether the offense actually wants to play up to the level we know the offense is capable of based on the talent. And that, of course, is a huge question mark. So all we can do is simulate the midseason mark and reevaluate from there. But, I mean, the defense has been pretty good. The offense... Should be good, just a question of whether they will be. Three and four. But within striking distance, the defense is still good. The offense is average, which, I mean, we're on the breakout of being a good team. The thing is, like, I think it's just bad luck at this point. I don't know what else to say about it because we have a top half of the league offense and a top 10 defense. That should be a winning team. Yet we're three and four. It's early. The Bengals are five and one. The Ravens are four and three. I kind of think we're right there. So I'm not really sweating it right now. Okay, moment of truth. We missed the playoffs. Ten and seven, though. I'll swing another year. We'll go very quick. Kenny Pickett, though. 5,252 yards, 42 touchdowns. Did throw 19 interceptions, which isn't great. But he should get a lot of XP because he... I had a ton of yards. Najee was still awesome. About 1,300 yards, just a yard shy. Nearly six per carry, 15 touchdowns. That's a great year. George Pickens, 1,900 yards. Less than 100 shy of 2,000. 18 touchdowns. Deontay Johnson was good. Pat Fryermuth was good. And then defensively, Miles Jack had 120 tackles. Six and a half sacks. TJ Watt at 16. 15 for Crosby. Okay. Yeah, next season, dude, has to be the season. Ravens won the Super Bowl. Lamar Jackson wins Super Bowl MVP and MVP. George Pickens has to be superstar dev now. Yeah, of course he is. Had to be. Had to be. We got a number of players to re-sign. Not really a ton, to be honest, though. Like, what, five, maybe? And we have money? We should be good. Okay, so the only guy that's declined so far is Cam Hayward, who I can actually just franchise tag, so I don't really see that as a big deal. Witherspoon, probably gonna walk. We don't really need Calvin Austin, but I think we can get him. Keller Witherspoon going to test free agency. That's bad news for me because I was planning on franchise tagging Cam Hayward. And if we do that, we're not going to have money to sign anybody. It's got to be done. NFL draft. We pick at number 18. I hope there's a really good corner I can move up for. 
because we need a third corner. And I don't like this name. I don't I don't see a corner worth taking, probably. Okay, 18. I'm going to take a corner because I think I like my chances of playing with a young corner with hopefully a development trait rather than just any random corner I have on my roster. Now, the one I would have taken is off the board. Tim Moulds, please be surprisingly good. Yes, surprisingly good. Tim Moulds, hidden dev. Only 21 years old. Okay, keeping him in state. Going across state from Temple, Philadelphia to Pittsburgh. But he looks pretty good. This dude's name is Picasso Boss. Are you shitting me? I'm just going to take him. I don't care. Don't care. Tim Mould's good enough to start. 74, playing up to a 75 overall. Yeah, he's he's good enough for sure. John Marshall, receiver, got taken at a USC. He's actually not bad either. Pickett up to star dev. I like, or superstar dev, excuse me. Pickens we already knew about. And then defensively, I like our corners. Max Crosby, superstar X Factor. I don't think I want to make any other changes. Everything looks good in specialist. I think I'm just going to put George Pickens back in the slot because he dominated beyond any reasonable belief of what he could do. No one thinks George Pickens is going to go up and put up 1,900 yards and 18 touchdowns like year two or three. Is it possible? Sure it is, especially with another game. And uh, I do think George Pickens is going to be really, really good. But that's a crazy year. I'm not going to mess with it. Three and three. Dude, what is this division? Our offense is back to bad. Dude, we have a 92 overall offense. What's happening? George Pickens, four plus touchdowns or 200 plus yards rushing slash receiving. I mean, that's just not going to happen. We can still make the playoffs. We're three and three. It's just I expected or hoped for at least five wins at that point. Got a big win though. Oh, shocker. He didn't put up four touchdowns and 200 yards unreasonable expectation of what he could do like maybe 175 okay that's a big game get up to superstar x factor i feel that okay 200 yards and four touchdowns dude you don't see that i thought we missed the playoffs again no we went 14 and three we won out that's what i wanted to see i mean this is unbelievable of course when something crazy like this happens, I usually have to show that I didn't force any wins. You can see the only one that says home or away, but it says home is the bye week. But other than that, we just won every single game. Bills in the divisional. We are significantly better than them, but it probably won't even matter. We'll probably lose. 41-35, and that is the video. <laughs> Kenny Pickett, though, did have a pretty good year. I mean, this is great. 4,700 yards, 34 TDs to 8 picks. Najee was still awesome, put up 21 touchdowns over five per carry on, 1,400 total yards. George Pickens was once again excellent, as was Pat Fryermuth. Fryer, yeah, sometimes I struggle with his name somehow. Deontay Johnson, eh, okay. And then defensively, Miles Jack led the team in tackles, as we've seen before. 19 tackles for loss for Max Crosby, 18 apiece for Watt and Hayward. Quarterback sacks, TJ Watt led the way with 13, 11 and a half for Max Crosby. Four picks for Devin Bush. And George Pickens is going to go up in overall again. He may be superstar X-Factor. But yeah, dude, like, I feel like I did all I could. Just wasn't enough. Sim didn't want us to be successful. George Pickens up to superstar X-Factor. You love to see that. Offense looks pretty solid. Defensively, wow. Keely Ringo's up to superstar X-Factor. We have so much red all over the place. Keely Ringo is a 96 overall with 97 man and 77 zone they have to do a better job of upgrading those guys in a more balanced way in my opinion but it is what it is i suppose that's gonna do it thank you guys so much for watching i hope you enjoyed i guess we'll see who wins the super bowl bills or saints but that's gonna do it guys saints win it i'll see you in the next one take it easy hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed already Derek stingley goes back to lsu or louisiana from lsu Win Super Bowl MVP with the Saints. What a feel good story. See you in the next one. Take it easy.